So I'm going to explain to you how to make photographs the exact same size as your painting. Um, and obviously your printer can't print a print as big as your uh, painting unless you have a big, huge, wide format printer. But what I mean is, is that this face is going to be exactly the same size as the face that I put on my canvas. So my cam canvas may be huge, but my print is going to be the very same size, same scale as my canvas. And as you can see, this is my sample here. I've got a photograph and I've got a box around her face and then I've put that same box over here on the, on the canvas. And that is extremely helpful. I highly recommend that if you're ever going to um, work from photographs, and, I, and this goes for anything, for landscapes, for anything, I would print multiple pictures, but make your pictures the same size as your canvas, and it makes it much easier to get a likeness and to see what you're doing. Um, if I'm sitting here trying to um, draw this or paint this eye, it's much easier for me to just look at that and know that this eye here is exactly the same size. It really helps me, as opposed to having to look at the whole face and then sort of, you know, see how the eye scales relative to this big face or this small face, more typical, if you're working from a small photograph. And instead of trying to sit there and look at a small eye and figure out, well, how much bigger do I need to make it and everything else, it makes it much, much easier if this is exactly the same size. So watch, um, watch this, how I do this, and I'll show you um, exactly how to uh, make your photograph the same size as your canvas. We need to make this image the same size as your painting, okay? So that if we could print out this image as a huge print, if we happen to have a you know, huge printer that could print banners, I want to make a single image that if I printed it on that big printer, it would come out the same size as your canvas. Now, I know you don't have a printer like that, but just go with me. We're going to make this image the same print size, not file size, but print size as, as you will paint it. So how do we determine what life size is? Now, one of the reasons that I like to paint life size is, one, it's just easier. Okay. In fact, I refuse to, to work uh, and paint smaller than life size because I don't think I can paint as well. If you paint people larger than life size, especially women, um, they can look not as beautiful <laughs> with a big head. <laughs> um, but in general, I, I just try to paint as life size or slightly less than life size. Okay, so how do we do that? Go to the magnifying tool and click on, in this case I'm clicking on Emily's face, until I think her face looks life-size on my monitor. Okay? Now that's, I know everybody's got a different monitor, it doesn't matter. The only thing I'm asking myself is I want her face to be life-size. Now the subject's face may be, you might have a really small monitor and the subject's face may not even fit on the monitor. But it doesn't matter. Just make their nose life-size or their eyes life-size or whatever it is. Just make it appear life-size in person as I'm sitting, as you're sitting here in front of your monitor. You want it I can't show you that because you can't sit here in person and look at it. Okay, life-size. It's, 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 sometimes it's hard to tell. Sometimes I adjust it and then I go, you know, get a drink from the kitchen and come back and look at it again and see if... Uh, does that look life-size? And sometimes I even bring my wife in um, and she'll look at it and, and, you know, make that judgment. Now, if you want to make very precise adjustments in the view, we're, we're not really adjusting the image at this point. We're only adjusting how we view it on a monitor, okay? And, it's, and, and you'll see why in a minute, but it's important. So, do this. Let's open up the Navigator. Window, Navigator. Make sure it's checked. Okay. Now, see the little 200%? That's how large it is. I can swipe that out and type in any number. Um, for instance, I can say to make it slightly smaller, I'll type in 180%. Just hit 180 and hit return. 
and it will make it slightly smaller. And I will continue until I think it looks about life size. I think it still needs to go, so I'll say 170, a little smaller. And still a little bit too big, so we'll say 160. Now we're getting there. Now it's sort of hard for me to, okay, maybe a slightest bit too big. So we'll say 155. And I would say that that's very close to being right. Okay. There, are, there it is. Now I've, we'll see, now I'm looking at it. It's funny how, how you're, it'll play tricks with you. I'm going to make it the slightest bit smaller. We'll say 152. Okay. Okay, good enough. I think that's life size. Okay, so now that that's done, we're going to take a ruler, a physical plastic ruler. In this case, I have this big measuring tape, which is way too big, but it's all I can find right now. And I, I take the measuring tape. And what I want to do is I want to measure two points that I can see on, on my screen. And they need to be as far apart as, not as far apart as, as, they, as they can be, but, but they need to be fairly far apart. In this case, I'm going to pick the outside edge of the two pearl earrings. And I'm just going to measure with the ruler, tape measure, and I get just, it's really exactly six, okay? That's typically, it's, you know, 5.85 or whatever, but in this case, I get exactly six by measuring, and we're gonna call that the actual ruler. Actual ruler equals six inches. Now, make sure, I'm measuring with, I'm measuring with an inches, um, measuring tape. Make sure, let's go up to Photoshop, Preferences, and then Units and Rulers, and make sure that that's set to inches. See, rulers, inches, but if you're using, uh, obviously, a ruler that measures in centimeters, you want to make sure it's set to centimeters, but in my case, I'm using uh, rulers with inches, so it's ma make sure it's set to inches. Okay. Now, measured that six inches. Now we're going to measure the very same thing, and you have a digital ruler as one of your tools. Go up to the eyedropper, click and hold down the eyedropper, and then slide down to the ruler tool. Now click on the very same places that you measured with the actual ruler. We're going to measure with the digital ruler. Click on the left side of the earring to the right side of the earring. Now go up to the top, make sure your tools is visible for the ruler, the tool for the ruler. L1 is 1.617. Length one is 1.617 inches. And this is the digital, the computer ruler, digital ruler. D R equals. Okay. Now, the AC divided by the DR, the actual ruler divided by the digital ruler, equals our multiplier number. Okay, this is just follow me here. Circle that multiplier number. So what are our numbers? Let's write it down. AC is 6 divided by 1.617 equals, and I'm going to use the calculator that I have on my computer, but obviously you can use a regular calculator. Okay, 6 divided by 1.617 equals our multiplier number, which is 3 point, and you only need two places, 3.71, circle that. That's your multiplier number. Now, I'll show you how we're going to use that number. Go up to image, image size. 
Now you have the width. Currently the image, which is the um, size of the entire um, photograph, is 8.533 inches wide. Make sure down here at the bottom that resample image is not checked. Uncheck resample image. Now take the width, which is 8.533, pull out your calculator, times our multiplier number, which in my case is 3.71 equals 31.65 is our new width. Okay, now notice that the height automatically changed. Okay, so we don't have to adjust the height. We only need to adjust the width and the height will take care of itself and that's because we're not resampling image the image and the constrained proportions is locked in. So, you, so in other words, if you change the width, then obviously the height also has to change to keep the same proportion. So just change that width number by multiplying the number that was there by your multiplier number and then putting in the resulting number, which is 31.65. So this is actually, if we were going we're gonna to use um, blow this, print this print out on a huge printer, it would be 31 inches, 0.65 by 47.475. Okay, there. Next thing, let's zoom back. You can just go over to your navigator and just slide the little slider back so that we can see the entire picture. Now we have this huge print that is too big for your printer to print. So what are we gonna do? Well, let's cut out a single print. Now, top left of your tools is a selection tool. In the selection tool, make sure that style, and if you don't see this dialog again, make sure that tools is checked. Style, instead of normal, it should be set to fixed size. And in fixed size, for width, we're going to type in um, this, if you have a, a normal small printer, 8 inches by 10 inches is a typical printer size, but what you want to type in here is the size that your printer will print. In my, in my case, I have a, a big professional printer, and so I can print, you know, 11 by uh, 22 inch prints. So I could type in 11 inches by 22 inches, but you need to find out what size your uh, photo printer is capable of printing so that you can type in the right numbers. Whatever that size is, the maximum size, um, that's what it'll be. I'm gonna put in eight inches by 10 inches because that is a typical um, size. And if you just swipe that out and clear it, if you just type in eight space I N and return or enter, it will put it in for you, 10 inches. Enter. Width is 8 inches, height is 10 inches. Okay, so now I'm going to place this. See, if I just click anywhere on this image, it will put an 8 by 10 selection box on the image. I'm going to, and if you click in the middle of your selection box and drag, you can drag that around. So I'm going to put it right around Emily's head. And then I'm going to say, go up to, once it's there, if I say edit and copy, it's going to copy just that part. And if I say file new, and in the name section, I'm going to type in Emily dash prints. Okay, and now it's created a new image. See, go up here. Now see the little tab? If you click there, that's the old one. Don't, don't get lost here. If you click on this tab, it shows you that image. If you click on this one, it's the new one. Now it's created a new image that's the exact same size as what I've just copied. I copied this 8x10 area on Emily's head, and when you do that copy and then you say new print, it automatically makes a new print 
that's the exact size of what you copied. So now if I say paste, her head fits perfectly. Okay, now I'm ready to print. And then after you make this first print, you can make as many prints as you want by just sliding the uh, selection box anywhere on your photograph and copy and pasting just like we did the first one.